I always look forward to our Sundays together, but I'm even more excited for Sundays like the one coming up as we have such a unique opportunity to worship during our cantata. Mike Rose and our choir and the orchestra have been hard at work uh, preparing to help us experience the presence of God during this Advent season. But because of this special occasion, uh, I won't be preaching. And some of you will rejoice uh, over this. And I look forward to hearing the comments that this is the best sermon I've preached all year. But I still wanted to share a few thoughts with you as we continue through our Advent season. Now, as I mentioned on Sunday, John the Baptist plays a pretty significant role in the Advent season because of his purpose of preparing the way for the Lord. Nowhere is this more evident than in Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 18, as John is preaching to the crowds that he refers to as a brood of vipers, who have come to be baptized by him in the wilderness. Now we can tell from this that John is not a fan of sugarcoating things, and I think this is because he understands the importance of our relationships with God. Behind these seemingly harsh words, I think, is a desire for the people of God to live and to act like the people of God, who are different from the world around them. In the text, John the Baptist warns that baptism shouldn't just be an outward ritual and we shouldn't just go through the motions of it, but that it's something that should change our lives, change our hearts, change our minds. He also takes the opportunity to, to further challenge his audience by also saying to them that by simply being born Jewish or a, a child of Abraham, that wasn't enough either. And that there should be some noticeable change in their lives because of what God has done for them. Now, as the text goes on, the, the perplexed religious crowd, now joined by tax collectors and soldiers, two groups considered to be uh, the least close to God's kingdom, ask John, what should we do? And then their uh, response from John is to simply be different. Help those in need. Stop stealing from people. Stop uh, taking advantage of others. Stop being unjust and immoral. Now, John's message is harsh. It's urgent, but it doesn't make it wrong. He says that encountering God's presence should change our lives and change it in tangible ways. He emphasizes this one to final time as he uses the image of, of wheat and chaff. Now, the practice in that day was to uh, take a pitchfork or a shovel and to scoop up the wheat and throw it into the air. And then when this happened, the wheat would fall back to the ground, but the, the chaff would be blown away and uh, most of the time burned up by a fire. What John is, I think, trying to say here is that the work of God in our lives should burn away the bad things through uh, repentance, that useless stuff should be gone through repentance and leave behind the fruit of righteousness that reflects the, ca the character, the nature, the, the actions, the attitudes of Jesus. Now, my prayer for us during this Advent season is that we just don't go through the motions or simply mindlessly participate in the, the rituals of Christmas, but rather allow God to use this time where we celebrate the coming near of God in Jesus to change our hearts, minds, and lives in tangible, noticeable ways that better reflect who Jesus is and what Jesus came into the world to accomplish. Now, as always, I hope everyone's doing well. 
I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. I hope you have a great rest of the week. And I really do look forward to worshiping with you all on Sunday morning, either on-site or online, beginning at 8.30. Have a great rest of the day, and God bless.